The very idea of repetition is that you can say of coarseness is not seen out of that in the context of the Jews' own vast opus here. As I will try to show, there is, and at the same time, there is not no reduce persuasive convincing conceptualization of the concept of repetition. To make a long story short, I will resume for you my argument and then I will repeat again it from the beginning. <laughs> my argument is the following one. Despite some of Badiou's explicit dealings with the topic of repetition, for instance, in early work theory of the subject, in short text Philosophy as Creative Repetition from 2007 and from a lecture What Repeats Itself from 2015, I would claim that it's precisely this concept, concept of repetition, which not, so to speak, together all the problematic points of Badiou's theory. These problematic points were pro pointed out recently by many others, by Zizek, by Horvath, etc., and concern dichotomy of being, situation, world, and event, rupture, break, status of change, status of resisting in situation, animality of the ideology, uh, status of the count, count for one, representation, signify, etc., and they concern also the status of the one non nonetheless and the Lacanian really. While most of the time, omitting the topic of repetition or simply denunciating repetition <coughs> as something bad, oppressing, pertaining to the state and capital, but you recently introduced the division a speak into this concept. There is now a bad one which is called repetition cycle, repetition as cycle, while a good one is called creative repetition. It is an interesting solution of the problem and at least nice attempt to sketch out how Badiou himself thinks repetition. But it seems to me that there are still many problematic points, as I will try to show you, left there, from the relationship between two repetitions to the, description, the very description that you has given about each one of them, respectively. There are also, I will try to show, two another rather spontaneous reduced conception of repetition. The first concerns repetition of history, but you consistently claims that our times are similar to 1850s or 1840s. This repetition I would link to repetition as cycle. But you himself did not do that, but he gave, he gave some clues to do that. The second repetition, spontaneous repetition, concerns deliberate Badiou's decision how to title or subtitle his works. As you know, his main work is Being and Event, and, uh, and Logic of Words is subtitled Being and Event 2. The forthcoming Immanence of Truth is subtitled Being and Event 3. The similar logic is presented at the level of manifestos. As you know, but you published two manifestos. The one is called Manifesto for, for Philosophy. The second one is called simply the second, manif second Manifesto for Philosophy. In French, it's a little different, as I will try to show, uh, because they say second, not the deuxième. But let's leave it for a moment. <coughs> and this logic, I would say, rather concerns what you call creative repetition. So, despite <coughs> Badiou's reluctance to deal with the problem of repetition, we have surprisingly no less than four models of repetition in Badiou, which basically can be cut down into two, which, and this is my main point, uh, does not Badiou uh, relate clearly, or he does not clarify convincingly enough their relation or their non-relation. Uh, at this point, I would say it would be very interesting to go back to Lacan and to the topic of Tichet and Automaton in his 11th seminar. And as Marvin Villar has shown, there are two different sorts of repetition which exist together and intertwined. We have the gap and then there's this little bit of the wheel which dwells in the gap. Because of all that, I'm tempted to change my title in paraphrasing beautiful Frank Ruder's book on the view, Idealism Without Idealism, which in fact is a book uh, how to think repetition in the view, actually, but we don't have time to go into this in the following sense. So my title is But You Repetition Without Repetition. And now for something completely different. What follows is the repetition, what I was just summarizing now. So there is certain clumsiness pertaining to the topic of But You and Repetition. One might even talk of surprise, given the vast systematic and clear nature of Badiou's work and style that is known and deserved, uh, famously deserved for. In other words, what his willy-nilly really philosophical partner in paradoxical time in Deleuze is known as the one of the major thinkers of the repetition today, Badiou himself very rarely spoke about it and up until recently always in a depreciative manner. 
And yet, one can speak of an important role of repetition in his opus, at least at several levels and instances. First, there is a crude, rough, and obvious immediate association. Isn't repetition practically everywhere in, ba in Badiou if we take into account that for him truth is the main category of every philosophy? Truth for Badiou is nothing but fidelity to an event, fidelity to the rupture or making a whole holes in knowledge, imminent rupture in a situation. However, one further complication stems from the fact that for Badiou philosophy is not production, it does not produce events of truths, they emerge in one of, of as you know, four generic procedures. The task of philosophy is to declare that there are truths, whereas philosophical category of truth with a capital T is in itself empty. And this is the prosopopoeian moment Nadan and Villar talk about this morning. So the philosophy has to uh, give voice to somebody else. So philosophy, with its fidelity to events which happen, emerge somewhere else without rhyme or reason, repeats something that emerged somewhere else. More precisely, for Badiou, there is no question of repetition here. He emphasizes the truth is a limit point, subtractive operation, which resembles principles clamps. The principles of truth, which link together and sublimate, I'm quoting the view from conditions, have the specific function of sizing truths. So, but you is talking about sizing the truth, etc. So this is a complicated matter here. What I was trying to say is that the Jew simply does not talk about repetition. He prefers the other term uh, instead of repetition, and this term is called return. The upper passage from condition, for instance, is from the essay, The Return of Philosophy Itself. This term return has, obviously, Lacanian overtones, we call Lacan's return to Freud. One always repeats something while one returns to something or to someone. So one for the youth. So one returns to philosophy and one returns to Plato while repeating philosophy, uh, gesture of philosophy or Plato's gesture. How this looks like, Badiou has shown in rewriting Plato's Republic, which took him no less than six years or so, he says. So there's then a return of problematic of return and not of repetition. And this problematic return, so to speak, on various levels, I cannot go into, into here. But the bottom line is that here is, uh, we can see an insistence in Badiou of this returning to. It is here, perhaps, at this point of, uh, uh, that we can mention that uh, already in 1985, in a work, Can Politics Be Taught?, Badiou demands the following. We have to redo Manifesto, and uh, what is meant is Communist Manifesto of Marx and Engels. How much time do they spend already? Lots of time, okay. <laughs> I would claim that this demand is connected to two instances of repetition in the view, which are not treated as such by him. First, consistent, the consistently repeated the Jews claim is that we live in a situation which is similar times of Marx and Engels' Communist Manifesto, and second, with an interesting kind of redoing Communist Manifesto, gesture itself by, by Badiou himself. He namely published two manifestos for philosophy, uh, manifesto for affirmationism, and we can uh, count in also these uh, conferences on the idea of communism. So we have two different yet implicit ways of approaching repetition in Badiou. One via history, the other via Badiou's own opus. I'm not going into these passages where uh, the view is mentioning how our times are assembled in 1980s or 40s. I would just say that in the recent philosophy and the idea of communism, uh, his interview with Peter Engelmann, he says, what I often say is that we are very close to the Mars of the 1840s and 1850s. A whole hysterical stage of the movement launched by Marx has come to an end. Capitalism has regained the upper hand all over the world. It is absolutely unrestrained and barbaric vis-a-vis -vis the community. How to understand this repetition? I would say, as clumsy as it gets, that repetition in this sense for Badiou is linked uh, with his emphasis that repetition as such is on the side of state and the capital 
Uh, and in this instance, I would just quote one uh, passage from his uh, lessons for, from the European Graduate School from 2012, page 28, where he says, the state itself is a repetition, etc., etc. So we have this uh, equation of the due uh, between repetition and state and be uh, between repetition and capital. And we have also a uh, number of many uh, passages where he is simply denunciating repetition as something bad. Let me quote, uh, for instance, in cinema he talks about oppressive repetition, terrifying logic of repetition. Uh, in his uh, Plato's Republic he compares repetition with erosion, etc., etc. That is why he urges the identity cult of repetition must be changed, for instance, in place of love, etc. And he claims the philosopher doesn't ju judge this kind of initia initiative with militant categories of the type you are right or you are right wing or left wing, you are betraying the revolution. He simply notes that it's a matter of repetition and that whatsoever has the force of a political condition of philosophy cannot be of the order of, of repetition. This is also connected with his claim that Lacan is our Hegel. I'm not going into this problematic, but it is also connected with this gesture, we have to redo the communist manifesto. Obviously, if Lacan is our Hegel, what we need is a materialist reversal of Hegel, and we need you know, a gesture which I think Frank Kruger, uh, in his book, has done it uh, very persuasively. Uh, Praising of Lacan that uh, his our Hegel is uh, interesting because uh, obviously he doesn't mention the problematic of one of the four uh, fundamental concepts of psychoanalysis repetition. He doesn't uh, deal with uh, Lacan's uh, uh, relationship between two repetitions, he and the uh, automaton. It is also a problematic gesture from the Jew's uh, point of view because, as you know, in conditions he simply dissociates, de de delineates de de his philosophy from its own history. Uh, well, time is really going fast. The idea I was trying to present that at the level of produce opus one can speak about petition rests upon an uh, interesting idea Frank Ruder presented in, in his book where he mentions the uh, uh, idea, uh, mathematical idea of counting omega plus one. This idea rests upon a notion that omega, that this uh, succession is different from natural number succession. Uh, and this natural number succession amounts to the electrics of finitude. Whereas uh, omega plus one presents some sort of a cut. And it is imp important that in uh, this context, the Jew speaks uh, cut. There were num numerous critics who criticized the Jew, and one of them is, of course, Lavoj Zizek. And the main point of, uh, I have a large quote from Slavoj, but the main point from Slavoj is, uh, what matters here, I'm quoting Slavoj, is that the Jew shifts from calling this resurrection repetition. Because in this uh, discussion with uh, Zizek, uh, simply uh, another category, resurrection in logical worlds, was introduced. And this uh, resurrection is possible for Badiou only in a, in a new world. However, uh, I would claim that this does not save uh, Badiou from uh, criticism he has to deal with. It. And uh, his, uh, recent, his recent changes concerning the very change he introduced four modalities of, of change does not absolve him from criticism. So, in a way, all this is linked to the problems which are vital for a uh, major philosopher of our times, which what he is, and they all concern 
problem of counting. For instance, omega plus one is an elegant solution, but it presumes that one can be counted, which is obviously polemics with Iabella with Lacan. So, uh, there's an interesting passage, page 33 of Subject of Change, where the Jew introduces thematics of Heraclitus and Parmenides, and where he's trying to answer the, 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 the criticism concerning his uh, uh, the, the problems we have. He has uh, thematizing and conceptualization of change. One could say that Bedou tries to, to solve the problem of repetition uh, in two ways recently. In 2007, he published his essay, Philosophy as Creative Repetition. And in 2015, in his uh, seminar, Immanence de Vérité, Seminar d'Alain Bedou, he gave a lecture, Qu'est-ce qui se répète? What repeats itself? And now I would just like to present you what is claiming there. I'm leaving aside the theory of the subject uh, because he there he is uh, treating there uh, the problematic of repetition uh, explicitly there. However, I would say the problems are the same. It is torsion there which jams up the mechanism of repetition, but the problem it seems to me is the same because the subject support I'm quoting the view is inescapably, inescapably divided between the part of itself that is subjected to repetition since it, is, since it is placed and the part that interrupts blocks and brings about the non repetition so in philosophy as creative repetition the view presents uh, topics he is constantly dealing with and this is the end of philosophy the death of philosophy and he claims that this is just a rhetorical means of introducing a new way or a new role into philosophy itself. The <coughs> development of philosophy always must be in the form of resurrection, whereas there is a closer relationship between resurrection and immortality for the view. Philosophy is not knowledge, as science is. Philosophy is not really a knowledge that is neither theoretical nor practical. It lies in the direct transformation of a subject. It is a kind of radical conversion, a complete change of life. Philosophy is an action, a singularity of an act, which always takes the form of a separation, introduces division into opinions. So, his, uh, his solution is that there is a creative repetition, and this creative repetition consists in the act, in the gesture, a gesture of division. How much time? Okay, five minutes. Uh, In the lecture, what repeats itself, but you start with the claim that there is a fetish in the finitude called repetition. This claim is linked with the thesis that repetition is the major operation of finitude. Fundamental argument of, of contemporary capitalism rests upon a premise, says Badiou, that capitalism is a natural organization of societies and that everything else is artificial. This is problematic, for instance, if you take uh, I don't know, analysis of neoliberalism, Philip Mirowski convincingly showed that uh, neoliberalism rests not just upon natural, but it's a sort of a hybrid uh, of artificial and natural. So this might be quite problematic. Anyway, but you links capitalism with the law, with repeating identity, which seems to be natural, what, while at the same time claiming that identity as such is something never closed which is problematic to him. So, in this context, he introduces what he calls repetition cycle, and I'm quoting. With repetition, finitude presents itself as a process, not only a state of things, but also as a law of their becoming. I think that modern form of repetition is subterraneally dictated by cycle of commodity. And this cycle, MCM, money, commodity, money, analyzed by Marx, is what drives and what is uh, responsible for the major subjective position today. You are either seller or buyer. I cannot go into this uh, introduction of critical political economy, so to speak, 
for me it's problematic because uh, in a way it leaves out uh, the problems of use value, exchange value, commodity form, etc. etc. So in, a, in one sentence, but you leaves out uh, the topics of production and he only uh, concentrates on the uh, topics of circulation. So in the middle of this lecture, this is interesting, but you stops suddenly tries to compare his BlackBerry, talks on the phone, and the lecture is uh, interrupted. Three actors come in and they uh, try to uh, play out uh, scene 42 from Ahmed the Philosopher, which deals with the topics of repetition. After that, but you introduces Kierkegaard's text on repetition, and he points out, and this I think is important, he points out that Kierkegaard splits, divides the very concept of repetition. I'm quoting, this division of the concept is one of the most important operations of philosophy. I would say that precisely the opposite. I would say that already Marx in his Miserable Philosophy criticized uh, dividing uh, concepts into bad and good ones. And what Badiou does is now to have this uh, this bad repetition, quote repetition cycle, which he bases on uh, Sartre, uh, his critique of uh, Sirius, etc. And now he introduces another one, a good one, which is called, uh, of course, creative repetition. And here he says uh, that this creative repetition uh, is some, somehow founded on the, on the point uh, of how to partage an idea. And in French, or very well, partage means to divide and to share. It also means to have same sentiments as others. So, creative repetition for Badiou is just to partage an idea. And he ends this big lecture with a big quote from Kierkegaard's repetition with, uh, with infamous, I belong to the idea where when it beckons me, I follow, etc., etc. As I said, it would be interesting to do the opposite, not to divide two uh, modes of repetition and to think them together, like Lacan did in the 11th seminar, but I don't have time to do it.